What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames. New episodes every Sunday. What a win last night. Oh, my God, man. Like, how do you lose this, spe- like, special teams battle, but score not, like, outscored them 9-2, to two, even strength? You know, that was possibly the most entertaining game of the year. That was probably the most entertaining game that I've watched the last three seasons. Like, not counting the comeback against Colorado in 1819. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not talking about, like, just the Flames. That was, like, the whole NFL, that was probably the most entertaining game of the whole year. Like, that game was just – it was crazy. I – we were – I was at my buddy's place watching it. I bet the listeners are going to realize that I lost my voice yelling at the TV <laughs> last night. Um. But Edmonton scored, what, 35 seconds in? Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, man, here we go. Can I just say, Brassard, like, buddy, this is, what, your ninth team in six years? Can you sell you a little less, please? The <laughs> dude was, like, absolutely, like, off his rocker after he scored that. Like, dude, the only thing that's getting shot out of an arrow is your career. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I know. We weren't happy with that. Like, I was like, this guy, this this dude. I was like, this dude has the audacity to pull off a celly like that. Like, we all know that Buddy's been a suitcase the last six years. He's not hiding. Oh, oh yeah. Like, what? <laughs> um, and how about Bill Koskinen? Dude. 583 save percentage. No, our goaltending's good. We don't need to address. Uh, no, that. Yeah, we don't. We don't need to address that. We're good. <laughs> Dude, Ken Holland is my favorite GM in the league. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like it's not even like the dude. The dude is a blessing. Do you remember all the Oilers fans before this game, like around the trade deadline? When they're like, oh, next battle of Alberta, when we have Brassard and Kulak, you guys are in so much trouble. Oh. Oh, yeah. They were really scary out there last night. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm shaking in my boots. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Brett Kulak, guys. Oh, my God. Dude, Milan Lucic rocking his shit was like – I was like, yo – <laughs> yeah did you see the way luch pulled up to the game they showed it on the broadcast oh, the all like, black dude he was an absolute sex symbol walking into the arena fat, fat. but he walked in like yeah, i just got my hair cut at the marta Luke barter barber shop <laughs> just walks like walks in just like okay i know we're winning tonight like it was like the sexier version of the mcgregor taunt yeah <laughs> like the more formal like classier version um (laughs) dude like i what (laughs) we'll get into it in more detail wow i'm gonna just start off by saying a cool little fun stat that i found um so by the 62 game mark when johnny goudreau hit 80 points which was 10 points ago considering that he's third in league scoring now at 90 uh it the 62 games played required the fewest amount of games to reach the 80 point mark in a season by a flames player since Jerome McGinley in 2006, 07. Wow. Like, dude, I like, I'm sorry. Goudreau's on pace for 113 points this season. Yeah. Matthew Kachuk is on pace for 103. Yep. And I'm sorry. I thought Eric Francis told me that, 
Johnny Goudreau was never going to hit 99 points ever again in his career. And I also thought that Matthew Kachuk was never going to break his career high of 77. So where are you at? <laughs> I'm sorry. We're a wagon. Act like it. Yeah. Like, yeah. unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable. I mean, we like, need to get that. Like, I mean, we started off the week, obviously, with that loss, the Sharks. Um, yeah. That was a rough night. That was, that was, it was like, a, it's like when you buy like a really nice Prius and then you need an oil change. That's what that was. That was like mid oil change. Like we were leaking. It was a leaky game by us. Very uncharacteristic, kind of broke away from the system. But, like, I don't know. That was just a weird night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, James played great for San Jose. Like, in the last five minutes there, the Flames were pushing to tie that game. And yeah. Ryan right put it on his head. I mean, it is what it is. Like we always say, you are going to lose some games mm-hmm. like that. Um, especially, yeah, when you do differ from your system – and you don't continue to play the style of hockey that Daryl has preached, mm-hmm. the results you're going to get. So, like, I remember post game, everyone was kind of losing it. And I mean, I get it. But at the same time, like, the last three minutes, I would say, of the period redeemed my whole, it's okay, we'll lose this one tonight because of their push. Yep. Um, and it was like that against the Capitals, too. Like, when we lost to the Capitals, like, I didn't care. Because the final three minutes of that game, I was like, holy shit, we're buzzing. I posted an article to Wen Column a few on Friday talking about this team's scoring effects and how they just don't obey it. Like, this team could be down by three or up by two. They're still pushing, and they're still locking it down defensively, and they're shooting constantly. Like, it doesn't matter what like situation or what part of the game or how much time is left or whatever. This team does not let up. This team keeps playing hockey to win the game. They don't, if, if it's a tie, they don't sit back and be like, okay, let's just, you know, force OT and hope that we can cap it there. No, they play for the two points. And they even do. on nights when they lose, like the San Jose game, like the Washington game, they're still giving you a reason to be content with the loss. Not that losses don't piss you off because as fans, yeah, I get mad after a loss, but you have to also understand there are 82 games over the season and Holy moly, this team has been playing the best structured hockey I've ever seen in my entire life by any NHL club. When you look at all of the advanced, like, you know, heat charts and metrics and whatever you want to look at, Yep. My God. And also shout out to Kent Wilson. He liked my article. He gave me a shout out on Twitter. So that was cool. <laughs> yeah, no, you really killed that article. Uh, it was a really good read. Um, and you kind of were able to explain it for uh, kind of the breakdown of it for not so hardcore fans like us. I thought it was a really good article. Um, you killed that one. But yeah, this team, they're going to play hard every night. And when they play their structured hockey the way that Daryl wants them to, they are a very, very tough, tough team to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we can talk about how, I guess, the top line and yeah, I guess the top six was kind of split up a bit. Um, can I just say Dylan Dubé has been unreal since he's been back in the lineup since he was scratched? Yeah, playing on that second line, he looked really good. Um right. He looked comfortable with Backlund and Kachuk. Mm -hmm. Um, I I did like what I saw out of of him. And I mean, I, I want to see more of that. um, I guess. I mean, last night they didn't, they moved Mange back up, but like, I'm genuinely curious, I guess, to see if we're going to see Dubé with Backlund and Toffoli. Because I don't think there's any way in hell that the top line gets split up for the rest of the year. I mean, we tried a different look just in case. I didn't mind to fully with Gaudreau and Lindholm, but it's not the same. No, it's not. Um, um, <laughs> because Chucky does a lot of play driving for that line. He's the one that's always uh, in, in the board battles and 
really playing a 200 foot game, but uh, I didn't mind Toffoli on that first line. I thought he, he played all right, but Toffoli, he got, he's been really unlucky lately. Like even last night when he rang one off the crossbar, we should have had 10. I thought like, that one, dude, I, I stood up and screamed. I was like, how? Dude, me too. I thought it went in too. I started cheering. No, nope, hit the crossbar. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, no, I was literally waiting for that for that siren to go off. Like, oh, no, that shit's in. That shit's yep. in. No, I thought so too. Yeah, I he like even I guess the last few games, both Toph and Coleman have been snake bit. Uh, Coleman had a lot of pretty solid looks last night and against Arizona. Yep. Um, and I think both of them have been just putting themselves in the right spots to get play going and they should have been rewarded these last two games uh, in terms of actually sure. Yeah. They hit the score sheet as primary assists, but still like, I, I still think they deserve goals. Like Coleman had a, an empty net against the coyotes and it hit the post. That was the kind of night he was having. Like, yeah. like, come on. Like they, they were snake bit for the last few nights and wasn't for a lack of effort. That's for sure. Yeah, no, they're they're in a slump right now, but if they keep getting themselves to the right spots, it'll come. It, it doesn't will. take long. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, like, holy shit, like, Kate, I guess the one more thing I want to add about the Sharks game is this team is 9-0. and in games after a loss since January 18th. Within a night, they're like, reset, let's play, let's win, go for yep. it. Like, wow. Yep. It's They have one off night. They go back in the locker room. They look at it, see what they did wrong, and they come out and they dominate the next night. It's happened every time they've lost this year. I mean, well, uh, like, what more? Hey, how could you not be happier with that? that like, dude like this is we're, we're fourth in the league yeah we're fourth in the nhl at the time of this recording yep like ah <laughs> <laughs> like this is crazy and then gaudreau and kachuk are top five in league scoring yep like ah! like yep. <laughs> crazy it's unbelievable what is happening this year. And also, oh, yeah. like, okay, the Arizona game, let's get to that because I'm very, very willing to just pop into that. Um, first period, yeah, it was sloppy. But at the same time, I can understand why it was sloppy. Like, it just – you're going to have games where you don't start on time, and we haven't seen that that often. We are actually one of the best teams in the league at starting on time. Um, yep. I just feel like the way that we came out in the second immediately, 33 seconds in, Chucky gets his 30th. I'm just like, okay, hey, yeah, no, this is, yeah, it's over. Good night. No, as, yeah, as soon as we scored that goal, um, you just felt the Flames grab the momentum. I mean, and they were going to run with it because three minutes later, got a beautiful tic-tac-toe to find Lindy right in the slot, and he doesn't miss those. He's putting that top titty every time. Dude, like, <laughs> top titty. Yeah, no, like, I just, like, man, that top line, they're literally art on ice. Like, they are. Like, the way they see each other, it's, like, the most high IQ thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, from all three of them. It's, it's literally, like, the Harlem Globetrotters of hockey. <laughs> on the ice. I'm not even joking. Like the way that even last night, the Lindholm goal last night, right? That was a set play. Oh yeah. And that was off the rush. That wasn't a tic-tac-toe play to set up Lindy in the slot. That was just like <laughs> Yep. My juice is flowing. Like, dude, I was just like, I love this team so so much. I Oh my God. Anyway, and so, even, yeah. <laughs> even the, in, the, in that Arizona game, I mean, Zadorov with a great pass to find Johnny um, in behind the defense. And 
it's a two on oh with Coleman and he just kind of shrugs Coleman off and says, yeah, I don't think so, buddy. I'm going for 200 right now. And beautiful shots. So top corner. Vimelka didn't stand a chance. I mean, seeing Johnny scores 200th was pretty cool. I, I liked that. Yeah, that was, that was sick. Like the, the thing that I found really, really funny about that whole thing too, was they asked, I guess they asked Johnny about it. They were like, you know, Coleman came in with you. Like, did you ever have a thought of passing? And he was like, well, to be honest, like, I didn't think I could because I thought that he had man coverage on him. So I just decided to shoot. I was like, are you sure about that? Or did you just want your 200? Like, you can be honest. Like, like we're not going to tell anybody. Yeah. Like, uh, man, just, I, wow. Just the fact that he's at 200 goals. He's the sixth player from his draft class to be in that category. What what really, really, really ridiculous value from a fourth round pick, huh? Yeah, no kidding, hey. Like just just yeah, just we just drafted a stud in the fourth round, like a literal game breaker, might I add. And if you still don't want to call Johnny Goudreau a game breaker and you want to wait till the playoffs, I completely understand. But last night, he fathered the Oilers franchise last night. Yeah, five apples. Five apples. His game score was 6.16. Like, <laughs> like, are you kidding me? That's, uh, that's pretty gross. Just, oh, just like, holy. So, yeah, back to my point. Gaudreau is now the sixth player from the 2011 draft class to hit the 200 goal mark. Players that join him in this category are Gabriel Landeskog, Nikita Kucherov, Mika Zibanejad, Mark Shifley, and Brandon Saad. Brandon Saad, wow. Yeah. Do you even want to talk about the deserve to win a meter against the Coyotes? It was 83.2 to 16.8. Yeah, we, we win that game almost every time. I mean, but it was two, two rookies that got their first NHL goals, I believe, against us. I which, think, yeah. <laughs> good for them. I mean, at least it's not like all the thrill scoring on us or anything. So I still can't believe they didn't trade him. Poor guy. I know. He's got to just hang out there for the rest of the year, just rot away. Like brutal. Like at least the hot dogs are good, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, good weather and good hot dogs. Facts. Can we talk <laughs> about Rasmus Anderson's goal, though? Yep. Holy. Yep. Activation. Blitzes right through the freaking defense, splits him in half, tucks it. That's something that we haven't seen from Anderson really. I've seen like he likes to activate on the right side um, and like play the puck in behind the net or carry it around the net. But I haven't seen him use that drive to the net move like that before. And I loved that out of him. Dude, if he could, like, that just shows you how much confidence he has this season. You wouldn't even have come close to seeing anything close to that last year under Jeff Ward. Nothing. No. No, um, so. Like, at the time that he scored that, right, it's like, holy shit, and these stats are, you know, after the Arizona game. So, for four people hop on me, be like, oh, but he's not a plus 21 anymore. Well, you know what? He was after Friday. So, after Friday, he was a plus 21. He was quietly top 20 in the league for points by a blue liner. Like, no one's talking about the season that he's having whatsoever. He's got 40 points and his flow. Dude, <laughs> like, you, when you're good, you can flex flow like that. Oh, yeah. It's like, he called, oh, my God. Just, I love Rasmus Anderson, dude. What a bounce back year. Yeah, no, he is the Flames. Uh... Either him or Markstrom. It's got to be your your bounce back comeback player of the year, right? Um, and I, yeah, last, last year was mm -hmm. terrible. I remember having some talks with people about like, do we need to move this guy out? And like, is he really not what we thought he was? He's come in this year and he's really adapted to Daryl's system, and he's shown everyone the kind of defenseman that he can be. Suddenly that 4.55 is looking like nice value. And exactly. That was, something, that was something we were scared of last summer because we were like, oh, God. Like, Rasmus Anderson was a below replacement level defenseman. Like, he was. was. Awful. His overall wins above replacement was like three. 
Yep. Like he was really bad last year. And, but yeah, this year I I seriously can't think of a single complaint I have for him. He's oh done no. everything perfectly. And even now with him on the power play, we used to harp on him being like, oh God, get this guy off the power play. But you know what? Like I don't mind him there anymore. He's all right there. What a year he's having. Seriously. It's so quiet too. Like no one within this market is even talking about it, which is like, it's just kind of like, Oh yeah, no, he's casually just, you know, top 20 in the league in points by defenseman and his analytics are some of the best, like in his career, if not just over the course of this season, when you're looking at, I guess, top four pairings and who's the standout in each market. He called Hunter ugly. And it's like, I, since then, and the pull pretenders thing two years ago, like I, I always loved Rasmus Anderson. And I thought that the value on his deal was going to be fine after the 1920 season. Cause I was like, no, nah, he had a good year. And then you watch last year and you're like, Oh, sweet Jesus. And now this year you're like, let's go. <laughs> no, but what, then it makes you think what's next year going to be like, you know, <laughs> if he is yeah, one of those. Uh, just like, I, I see the thing is, is like we have Daryl at the back again next year. So I'm not, I'm not worried about a fall off from any of these guys. Really? Jeff Ford buried the guy. Absolutely. Just like, I still can't believe that we're even talking about Jeff Ward, but like, fuck, like it just, it was brutal when you look at the, at the comparison. He did with a lot of players on that team. I mean, I mean, just look at Kachuk, dude. Yeah. Like Kachuk, you can talk about how Kachuk took time to adjust to Daryl's system. All of the whole team took time to adjust to Daryl's system. Daryl Sutter came in and was like, this is how you play hockey. Sorry that you spent eight years like burning your careers into the ground. This <laughs> is how you play. Congratulations. Daddy's home. Like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, like, seriously. Because, wow, like we said it earlier, Kachuk's on pace for 103 points, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. like huh? We have we two have, guys that could hit over 100 points this year. And Elias Lindholm could still be a point-per-game player. Kachuk faking a Michigan against Arizona got me so hyped. I saw that. I thought he was actually going to do it. I thought he was. Like, you and I talked about it. We were like, who's the guy on our team who would probably have the highest chance of pulling it off? And we were sat and we were like, it's probably Kachuk because he's the guy that's like, I'm, I'm going to just be flashy here. Let's go. Let's try this. See if it works. And the second he, like, faked it, I was like, oh, are we, oh. we going to see it? And then he's like, no, nah, psych. I was like, all right, well, it's fine. Thank you for getting me hyped for, like, 10 seconds. You're my boy. Like, just, oh, my Lord. But, yeah, let's get to the – Edmonton game. Well, one thing I want to touch on is uh, Leon Dreisaitl is such a fraud. Um, how do you have four points and you're still a negative four? You are the worst center in the NHL. Like, you just your team hung out to dry on the beach in Mexico, like just gone. Here's an interesting fact now that we're going to touch on that. He's the first NHL player to have a hat trick and a plus minus of minus four or worse in the same game since Leafs forward John Anderson. Do you know who that is? Of course you no. don't, because that was 17 years before we were even conceived. That was on January 12th, 1983. Hey, Sea of Red, Raja here with a special announcement. I'm a brand ambassador for SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile app that literally lets you buy tickets in the easiest way possible. I think their tagline is that they take the confusion out of buying tickets. Something like that. Use the promo code CFT to get $20 off of your first SeatGeek order. I'm talking sporting events, concerts. Remember, the promo code is C of T. Share it around, tell your friends, and go Flames go. Power play merchants, man. The Edmonton Power Play merchants. Was that game not literally proof of that? Literally. I, I've been saying this all year. I was saying this after the freaking Oilers fans were complaining all this week about refs versus Oilers. Um, yeah, the reason you have to complain about that is because the only time your team can win a game is when you get power plays because you can't score five on five. Like, just... <laughs> and then last night, just... 
everything that I've been saying for the last week was laid out on a TV screen for 60 minutes just for everyone to see. Around the country, too, nationally. Like, and your poverty franchise folds on national TV. Like, okay, how does Ken Holland look at his roster and be like, oh, yeah, no, we're winning around. I don't understand. Actually, I do, and I love it. They're just wasting the primes of two of the best players in the world. Like, I'm sorry, but he they ass. Like, was that game not Flames versus refs? Was it not? Oh, it was. I like. Thing is, when we say that, we're we're actually saying it as like the as like a genuine fact. We're not using it as an excuse. For- the first two periods was bizarre. I mean, no, that please. that Backlund hit on McDavid. Sure, that's interference, but uh, I'm sorry. I need an embellishment call on McDavid there. Rolling around on the ice. Oh, my God. It hurts so bad. <laughs> what a joke. Like, what a loser, bro. Some kid. Now, this is the funny part. Some kid DMs me after that happened. He was like, that was so dirty. Backlund should be fine. Like, if anything, your orange-looking Lorax buddy needs to be fined for delay of game because buddy went swimming. Like, kaploosh. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. There, there's nothing. No. Like, I read that, and I was like, oh, sweet Lord. He thinks that that was actually something that's, like, finable. Oh, my oh, God. I can't believe it, man. I really can't. And last night, I got into a couple arguments not arguments. I would say heated debates on the Edmonton Oilers uh, Instagram. And I had 16 year old kids and their only comeback or chirp was five cups to one. We weren't even born when the cups were won. You were 20 years away from being born when the cups were won. How was that an argument? Do they realize that out of those five, they won one without Wayne Gretzky. I'm sorry. Five what? You can fit it on a whole hand. What are you, Infinity Stones? What a joke. Like, what a, like, yeah, like, I'm sorry. You guys got the best player of all time on your, like, and you reap the benefits out of that. Too bad you can't stop talking about it because that's the highlight of your fucking poverty franchise. We found out a pretty cool stat last night. Um, since 2010, the Edmonton Oilers have had nine top 10 picks. And your uh, elite franchise is losing on Hockey Night in Canada 9-5 to five, with your nine top 10 picks since 2010. You really want to talk to me about poverty? Like, that's the only stat I need to say. Get four 30 goal scorers on your team and we'll talk. Literally. Like, oh, wait. Sorry. Oh, we'll just do 60s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting stat teams with four 30 goal scorers since 0506 the 0506 carolina hurricanes the 0607 sabers the 0809 flyers the 0809 red wings the 1819 sharks and the 2122 flames how is johnny goudreau not in the heart conversation i open up Sportsnet today yeah and they post who do you think is more likely to win the heart austin matthews or jonathan huberto i was like Johnny Goudreau <laughs> like it's, it's option C like what like I don't I don't know I, I I don't get some of that stuff the award winners and whatnot I yeah. I try not to look into that too much because the awards are honestly kind of rigged I don't know yeah ever, like back in 2015 when Ekblad won the Calder over Johnny I was like yeah okay fuck it I don't care anymore yeah like exactly Like, that was the day I was like, yeah, no, NHL awards are a sham. And 14-year-old me was like, "Uh." (laughs) how sad that Johnny didn't get it. So since then, I was like, yeah, screw these awards. Like, I'm done. And can we talk about scoring two goals in 16 seconds in the first period? I wasn't even done celebrating the first one. I missed the second one. (laughs) I was, was like, up chatting with my buddies about how – we scored like that one goal talking about the goal. And then all of a sudden they all start cheering again. And I'm like, what? I look at the screen and then Backlund just rips one top Ched. And I'm like, Oh my God, what is going on? Like after that goal, I knew this game was going to be nuts. 
Yeah, no. After that goal, I was like, okay, yeah, we're in for a barn burner. Yeah. Like, wow. That was ridiculous. The two goals in 16 seconds, like, come on, man. First and foremost, I just want to say the set play on the first goal, we touched on it earlier, but so sexy from yep. home from Kachuk and Goudreau. Tanev then scores his fifth and really nice set play there from Blake Coleman to find oh, him. Yeah. And can I just say, Scott Oak, he's been pissing me off as of late. <laughs> yes. Did you hear the question that he had, like, what he told Tanev, like, in the intermission? I'm not sure if I did. He was like, did you know that this is your first goal against the Oilers in nine years? Did you know that, Chris? Tanev just looks at him like, no, I, I did not know that. No. Yeah. And then yeah, he like, literally made this face. Yeah. Just well, like, I mean, that's that's face usually. I mean. <laughs> Fair, but like, like, what the hell? Like, why would you even bring that up? Like, oh, congratulations, you scored. Did you know that it was your first in almost a decade? Can you tell us how you feel about that, please? Like, what? Right. Yeah. Like, way to bring the guy down after he's put in – the team out on his back pretty much defensively as well. Like, get out of here. It's not his game, Scott. <laughs> um, yeah, and then Backlund scores from Mansion to Foley. <laughs> you know what a pass from Mansion body, bro. Oh yeah, that was disgusting. Yeah. You know what Pat, that reminded me of um I think it was a game in 2020 or in 2021 where Mitch Marner went behind our net and threw that crazy pass out front to Tavares. And he mm-hmm. went above Nick. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. That, one, that goal so much. Like, That's seeing that, like, wow. That was – I wonder where they got that one from. <laughs> That's the one they've got on repeat on EA when you pull up on oh, 2022. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, just brutal. <laughs> I don't like to be on the other side of a highlight reel, bro. Like, I, it hurts me. Like, um, and then, yeah, we can talk about Shillington's goal. And the way that Johnny carried that in. Oh, my God. Just to create space, the patience that he has. He just took as much time as needed, found Shillington backdoor. Miko Koskinen was out for a freaking drive the other way. Um, And my one buddy's like, watch, that's going to get called back for goal interference. And I was like, I dare Edmonton to challenge that. I dare you. Facts. There was no goal interference on that. (laughs) <laughs> and then Chucky with his 31st from Johnny and Tanev. Chucky with his 32nd from Johnny and Hannafin. Like, come on, man. Like, oh, my God. And Chucky giving it to Mike Smith. I love that. I love that. Oh, my God. Can't even do the heart rate. It's like yeah. a stupid potato. It's like an hourglass, <laughs> but it's fine. Anyway. Um. Yeah, no. Matthew Kachuk chirping Mike Smith and then getting like into it physically with him with- later on. <laughs> like, damn. Like, it, can I just say, it really makes you wonder how toxic the locker room wa- could have probably been here in 1819. Because right? we're talking about how Hamannick, how the Canucks, the players and organization they're pretty much thanking the heavens that ottawa has somehow decided to trade for him and they've come out and been like oh thank god we got this guy out of our room well thank yep. like, thank god james neal was toxic mike smith is clearly not a guy that you lo- like is likable like no this team in 1819 was really toxic that's all i'm gonna say because chucky's out here or- going after mike smith saying shit to him like did you hear? Did you see him mouth? You're bad. Yeah, he was like, "You're fucking bad. <laughs> like you're not good. You are not good." Um, oh God. I want to talk about Chucky's patience there too. Like Mike Smith's five hole has its own gravitational pull. We all know that. And Chucky just waited until it opened, and yep, slid the puck right underneath. And Mike Smith didn't stand a chance. He had no clue what was coming. Like, he was. Of clothing hanging in the wind like just unbelievable like oh man like uh we completely violated their entire tandem oh we my did. lord just just showing 
straight up showing them like how look at your goalie tending you bozos you think you're making it far in the playoffs keep wasting 97 and 29's primes you yep doofs. yep wow just unreal and i mean ben lindholm with his 34th from johnny and chucky to me it's yep. seven, five right after a monster save from jacob markstrom which i think was the turning point that solidified the win yeah i said that to you um after that marquee save, um, everything just kind of got under control for the Flames. And the third period was great, wasn't it? I mean, oh yeah, <laughs> you 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 saw the Flames just suck the life right out of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, but yeah, if Markstrom doesn't make that save, this hockey game could have been a very different story. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Marky wasn't great last night, but he made a really really big save when he needed to, and that that won us this hockey game. Second half on a of a back-to-back i mean he started both nights i think do you think he starts against colorado i think so okay i'm genuinely curious because i we've seen daryl put vladar in against tough competition as like i don't i don't know if vladar is going to play against colorado three times that's my thing i think he wants to start against them at least once yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, Vladar's played the majority, like, both games against Colorado this year. Um, yeah. And, yeah, like, that's why I'm just wondering. I feel like Vladar might get L.A. on Thursday. He might. He um, might for sure. Yeah, and then Backlund scores his second of the game from Toffoli and Hannafin. Like, oh, yep. Dude, Backlund was disgusting last night. He had three primary points. He was really good last night. Um, Dylan Dubé scoring to make it nine five made me really happy because it's like a reward for him being really good the last five games. Yeah. Um, and just I really wanted him to pull out the mean mugging thing again, like the, <laughs> like do that, please, like just and boas Dubé, please, if you ever get across this, please do that. Just do it every. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> just do it whatever you score, please. Make it your thing, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, but back to Backlund, he had three primary points. His five on five core C4 was 71.43. His five on five expected goals for percentage, 70.6. Wow. And if you want to look at the entire, I guess, game sheet, shots were 38 to 31. Our power play went 0 for 4. I mean, is what it is. I don't care. Shot attempts. Sportsnet said 72 to 40. Yeah, the Flames had an, a ridiculous amount of shot attempts. I remember seeing that stat late in the third, and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, we had that many? Because we got outshot in the in the first period pretty, pretty heavily. I think it was 13 to 6 or 12 to 6 or something like that. Um, they uh, they outshot that. Yeah, they all shot us at pretty much a two-to-one pace um, in the first period. But the Flames kind of controlled the game through the second and third, and I guess brought that back to even. Like, scoring chances, 37 to 24. High dangers, 17 to 13. Johnny Goudreau, like we alluded to earlier, had a 6.16 game score. With five apples on the night. <laughs> Ugh, just... And then Kachuk, 5.13. Hannafin had a game score of five. Noah Hannafin had a hell of a night for his 500th career NHL game. He was a plus four, two assists. And, uh, like, regarding Hannafin, he's the fifth youngest blue liner in NHL history and the youngest since 1994 to hit the 500 game mark. He's 25 in 60 days. Only Scott Stevens, Phil Housley, Luke Richardson and Al Freight were younger when they hit 500 games played. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, it was like a couple of weeks ago or last week that I was telling you about how, yeah, Hannafin's already almost played 500 games and he's only 24 years old. Um, crazy. Yeah, just, like, you know, the lineup and he, he got in at a very young age and he's such a solid D man, though, isn't he? Like, he's not going to give you anything flashy. He's not going to, impress you in that way but every night night in night out he does his job he can chip in offensively if you need him to like i i love hannafin i think he's a great defenseman me too i love him dude i love our whole decor and yeah, I do 
we can talk about Zadorov and Good Branson probably having an off night last night. Um, they got burned they, a couple times. Yeah, just a few, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. I you're gonna have nights where you're off your game, and the team as a whole could be going, but you're probably starting up a little late. They were in behind the play three uh, from my count three times last night. Um, Zadorov had just let. For some reason, he came to pinch the middle with Gabranson, and Dry Settle went wide on him, and just burned him, and came across, put it uh, blocker side on Markstrom. Um, that one wasn't on the power play; that was five on five. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, it's a bad read. It happens. I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate that you uh, you let Leon Dry get that opportunity because he's not going to miss those. It's almost like he's one dimensional or something. That's almost something like that. <laughs> Listen to this stat. The Kachuk Gaudreau Lindholm line is outscoring the opposition 59 24 at five on five and 101 to 30 in all situations. Ooh. Johnny Gaudreau has 10 more five on five primary points than the next best players in that category. One of them, Matthew Kachuk and Austin Matthews, who are tied at 43. And Johnny has 53? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's not God. even close between him and the rest of the league. Yeah, in five-on-five five impact. <laughs> it's not even close. Third in the league, number one in my heart. Like, I don't know how else to phrase it. Like, what? Right. Like, oh, wow. And, ugh, just this team is gross, dude. What I get time so to- amped. Watching yeah. this team, it is not even funny. Like, I am dialed in, and I am out here acting like a douche a little bit now on social media because I can. Now ah, we're fourth in the league, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, oh, just crazy. What and a time. Wanna, yeah, man. Just, what, yeah, what a time to be a fan, seriously. I want to get into something that's a little bit more on the somber note. Can we talk about Sean Monahan? He's a healthy scratch now. And you can use the term healthy all you want. We all know he isn't. Uh, Shit, dude. Like, he's 27. He's been through copious amounts of pain. He might have tweaked something. um, And Daryl's given him a couple games to just rest it before he gets back in. But Monaghan means too much to this city and too much to this hockey team for him to just sit from the press box for the rest of the year. And even, like, watching the game last night, I'm sorry, Ryan Carpenter, I didn't see you out there. Um, you had, like, one defensive play where I was like, oh, that's good. But then, like, I literally – whenever the fourth line was on the ice, all I noticed was Lucic and Lewis. You were absolutely invisible. <laughs> I would take Sean Monahan over you right now because at least Monahan, I can, like, notice on the ice. I, I realize that he's out there, whether that's good or bad. That's, <laughs> that's, up, here, that's up to you to decide on which. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't even know what to say about Monaghan. I hope he gets healthy. I, I hope um, there's some way that he can f- turn back the clock and find what he, ha- what he used to. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a downward spiral, and it's not looking good right now. After a 27-goal season in 16-17, he underwent surgery on his left wrist. A year later, he scored 31 goals. Then he was shut down three weeks early for two hernia surgeries, groin surgery, and wrist surgery. In 1819, yeah. after his 34 goals, he revealed that he played through the playoffs with a cracked thumb. And then he revealed at the start of camp that he's had a locking hip that he played through since game six of this shortened season last year. Like, just to go back to some of the quotes that were said at the time, it's a quarter mile walk and Monty is limping the whole way. It's shocking to me that this guy can barely walk from the rink to the hotel and he's getting up to play games. And then he even stated, if I bent down, my hip would lock and it would stay locked. It would take a few seconds to unlock. When you're taking face-offs throughout games and you bend down and it sticks, it sucks. No shit. No shit. That sounds like... Come on, sports element aside, I don't know any player, like truly any player that cares about an organization and a city 
so much the way that Monahan does in order to that he never once accepted not being in the lineup, even when he was playing through copious amounts of pain. We sat and dragged out his play all year last year. And last year I dragged him out because I was on the, I, I, I thought he was hurt. My, I was like, there's no way he's healthy. I don't see yes. him healthy and playing like this. Right. No. So I'm like, there's no way he's healthy. So I was wondering all year if he was hurt. Then we found out it was probably the worst injury that he's had in his career so far. And I'm like, okay, called it, unfortunately. Like, shit. Yeah. Um, we're talking about a guy who physically couldn't feel like himself for the last two years, maybe more, right? And he's accepting a new role. He's in yeah. a new role. He's trying to be a part of it. But the the thing is the thing is for me, um, after after like last season, he said he was going to take the off season, um, get healthy, get the surgeries that he needed for his hip, which he did, and rehab, which he did all last summer. And when he came to camp this year, he said he, that he was healthy again, feeling back to normal, like himself somewhat. His on ice play hasn't proven that. Um, I think so it's, I, I it's, think it's a facade. If it's not the injuries now, or the media was just telling us that he's good. I don't know which, which of it it is, but he's got to figure it out here because he could be the factor that pushes this team to a Stanley cup. If Sean Monaghan was ever able to find himself just a little bit this year, he could be that X factor that pushes us to the cup just having a, a way deeper center core you know what i mean 100 percent um and my thing is is like we're we're so ruthless on our players sometimes that you forget that these guys are human beings yeah you are monahan is 27 years old that's six years older than us he's had how many surgeries that shit damages you for life Oh, yeah, it does. We're not talking about sports here. We're talking about the human element. Oh, yeah. Why on earth did management let Monaghan play last season? You should have shut him down the second you heard about his hip locking. Yep. Made him get the surgery he needed because, in hindsight, last year was a wasted year anyway. It was. You want to talk about shitty asset management? That's what – that that's that's – a living, breathing depiction. I don't know how much of it is management forcing Monahan to play because they see already, even especially last year, they saw the holes in the roster. Mm -hmm. I don't understand just in general, I guess, why he was cleared to play. You, have, you have a guy on that large of a contract. Like we're talking 6.375. You'd think yeah. you'd be applying some sort of asset management and load management, kind of like what they do with NBA players when they have a sore thumb. I'm talking about a locking hip. Yeah. I'm not talking about a sore thumb. I'm talking yeah. about a guy can't bend down. He's 27. I just hope that he – there's some way that he can find himself again because not only do the Flames need that, he needs that for himself. He needs that confidence booster. Otherwise – I don't think he's going to be around the NHL much longer. So, and I hate saying that because Monaghan has been so big here in Calgary. Um, he was the star of this team right next to Johnny Gaudreau. You know what I mean? Um, it's just brutal to see. It's, it's really sad. It it's is. Not, like listening to Gaudreau talk about him too and about to like borderline cry. I was like, I cut around yeah. I was yeah. like, I, that is not, but I, it made me tear up. Do you know how rare it is for things to make me cry? <laughs> like, like we're, we're talking like a few movies have done that. Okay. <laughs> but like something straight up like that, just looking at Johnny's body language when he was like talking about him, I was like, I was like, holy shit, dude. Like sometimes people need to understand the whole picture before they, before they start making assumptions about things and start laying out their opinions, like they're some sort of professional scouts, you know what I mean? Daryl Sutter even, even alluded to it. Like, Oh, I should have been monitoring it better. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah, just he, like, what are you monitoring? Like, has he been hurt all year again or what? Yeah, no, I know. Um, it's been weird. It's been really weird. And so Sutter's saying that he should have been moderate. moderate I, I can't even say it. <laughs> should have been watching him more this year, I guess. Um, does, yeah, does, does that allude to that he's still hurt? Or, like, what is going on? Because we've been held in the dark, in the shadows, a lot with this. Like, I, I don't know, man. I just, I hope he figures it out. I hope the organization figures, figures it out. Whether that means, like, he needs a fresh start somewhere, um, anything. I just want to see him figure it out and hopefully get back to what he used to be, whether that be in Calgary or anywhere else. I love every single individual that's on this team. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm that type of fan. I'm not the type of fan that goes and attacks guys. Um, no. And any time that I've ever talked about a player – or anything it's because i know that they can be at another level and i want them to get there Mm -hmm. because i've seen it because i've been watching this game since i was five years old yeah and dude like come like if monahan can come back to 30 percent of what he was in 17 18 he'll be an asset in the playoffs oh 100 percent. he just yeah just a little bit is all we need just a really? few goals here and there. It's sad. It really is. But it's crazy how Gaudreau, Lindholm, Kachuk, Manjapani, they're the mimics of uh, <clears throat> Flurry, Neuendijk, Reichel, and Roberts. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it is. What a year. What a year. Enjoy yeah. it, see you, Brad. Seriously, because this is like – this is special, and I hope that it translates into the postseason. It's not giving me a sign that it won't, but still, until we get there, cautious optimism. Yeah, no, nope, oh, for sure. What a time to be alive. Gaudreau and Kachuk, yeah. top five in points. We're fourth in the league. Also, another thing, um, yesterday, Elliot Friedman talked about how uh, Matthew Coronado team is going to be talking with him in a few days trying to figure out what his next steps are Friedman thinks he's going to stay at Harvard for another year which I wouldn't be shocked yeah if he did so but I mean realistically if you wanted to sign his VLC he's good enough to do that now I mean he's pretty much been used in all situations over in Harvard right now he's above a point per game there was above a point per game in his freshman year I think what is going to end up happening is he'll have a sophomore year at Harvard, go back there next year, then he'll sign. Yeah, and then, yeah, you could even see him. I I think he'll go back for one more year at Harvard and play play another year out there. And then, yeah, at the end of next year, um, whenever Harvard season's over, you could see him sign and maybe hop right into the pros, Um, depending on how much he develops over the summer and in that second year at Harvard. If not, he'll jump onto Stockton or jump into Stockton right away and be a second line winger there for sure. Um, yeah, either way, it's time to get start getting excited about uh, Coronado. And speaking of Stockton, we start getting excited about Peltier too because yeah. he leads the le- the Heat in goals. Is tied for the team lead in shorthanded goals. He's a goal back of Stockton's single season goal record. Wow. Two points back of tying Stockton's single season rookie scoring record. Wow. Look at Pelt- that. He's a wagon, dude. He he's a wagon. It's going to be Peltier and Coronado are future line mates in this city. Oh, yeah, for sure. The Edmonton Oilers suck and the Calgary Flames win. It's a good morning. <laughs> Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're fourth in the league. We can't hear you from down there. Just saying. Just saying. Just- just 11 points back from us or something like that. Like, what a joke. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Anyways, if you guys like our content, there's more of this where you came from. I don't know if you guys noticed our new intro, but we have an in-studio produced intro now because we're running a legit show now. So that's cool. Um, yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Tell your friends. Only if they're Flames fans. Just kidding. Even if they're just hockey fans, they want to hit the subscribe button. That would help us out. But uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody.